How can we repurpose the mean of social media in our lives after the COVID-19 pandemic? COVID-19 has increased the time students spend at home, which has led to a spike in usage of social media, decreasing the face-to-face -face social interaction between students. Ultimately, resulting in various problems such as social isolation, anxiety, and depression. This leads us to wonder whether or not we need to repurpose the use of social media. Research shows that 81% of teens utilize social media. For some, this may have turned into an addiction that leads to a more serious mental health issue or the development of. According to the child mind, in recent studies, teenagers and young adults who spend the majority of their time on Instagram or other platforms have substanti substantially from 13% to about 66%, higher rate of reported depression in comparison to those who spend less time consulting their phone. Further strengthening this point, the rise of smartphones uses in tandem occurred at the same time as a percentage increase in depression. Since cell phones result in access to social media, it can be inferred that, if, that it created an increase in teen insecurities, which can possibly lead to them having depression. The effect on students can be seen specifically from the sharp spike in reports of students seeking help at college university counseling centers, principally for depression and anxiety. Visits jumped 30% between 2010 and 2015. COVID-19 has carried various impacts on the generation, from quarantine to virtual school, to not being able to see friends and families often. Quarantine led to the only means of being able to talk to your friend through various virtual platforms such as Instagram, Snapchat, FaceTime, and those are just to name a few. But having those resources and using them in a medium can prove healthy to you and your friendships. But as always, only a certain amount is a good amount. After that line is crossed, you're left with an addiction. Real life example was when we hit PSAT day. All students came back in one environment after several months and my friends and I that I've known for many years and we share a close friendship. It felt very awkward to meet after a long time since we had not seen each other for months and had not been placed in a social environment for many months. This is due that COVID-19 kept us locked at home. In teens, a study reported that 27% of teens felt distant from their friends and family friend groups. How has it affected mental health though? 2020 was one of the weirdest years seen for the whole world that has not been seen for hundreds of years. Social media today has turned toxic. If you open your phone, people are constantly putting others down. To boost self-esteem and feel a sense of belonging in their social circles, people post content with the hope of receiving positive feedback. Couple that content with the structure of potential future reward, and you get a recipe for constantly checking these platforms. Seeing people's lives during quarantine almost always makes you feel sad in some way because you tend to think since they're posting about it, it's something positive that they have accomplished. Tools such as Snapchat have replaced the means of FaceTime and actually talking to their friends for young adults. Since our brains are still growing, we do not understand the dire need of true communication through talking or calling for our, for our relationships to be strong. I remember personally when I was younger without a phone, I would spend my evenings outside, riding my bike, playing football, running, or just hanging out with friends. Now I see the younger generation growing up and they find much more interest in phones, tablets, computers, and video games. The rise in depression from a statistics point to the thesis as social media users who rely on that for their sole communication purpose sees, sense a less deep emotional connection than those who speak to their friends through actual calling or video calling platforms. The increase in depression can also be linked to a loss of self-esteem, especially in teenage girls and boys at times when they compare themselves negatively with artfully curated images of those who appear to be prettier, thinner, more popular, and richer. According to a study done at Harvard, young people on social media tend to report higher levels of anxiety and lower self-confidence. Lower self-confidence impedes your ability to talk to other people. You may feel judged by every little thing and be afraid of making friends. It also impacts your physical health, which adds to build more mental health problems. When you spend your entire day on social media, you lose time to go outside, spend time with family, work out, exercise, such activities that help boost your self-confidence and make you feel achieved and bring you to mental peace with yourself because you feel like I've gone out and accomplished something. Users rather prefer spending time to themselves on their devices, idealizing their life. This persistent use of social media 
also seems to impact your sleep, which leads you to be more tired and lazy the following day. This also leads to a lack of focus, motivation, which can lead to additional decreasing academic performance. Social media not, is not necessarily a bad thing. It should not be considered a bad thing, but it, when it's used responsibly. However, a constant abuse of social platforms start to lead a subtle effect on the body. These minor outcomes can cause graver consequences in the long run. So get with the program. Due to COVID-19, the face-to-face -face social interaction between students has decreased fundamentally and increasing the time students spend at home. This is causing a spike in social media usage and consequently leading to problems such as social isolation, anxiety, and depression. There are multiple ways you can help ease the addiction and anxiety. Call your friends more often. This only takes a few minutes out of your day and it'll allow you to sense a greater emotional connection with your friends. Keep a balance throughout the day, spend time outdoors and indoors, spend time with friends and family. Avoid using your phone before sleeping. This will allow you to get a better night's sleep, therefore being less tired and more motivated the following day. Set a screen time, limiting the amount of time you spend on specific apps can decrease the stress that you might feel. However, it is important to have discipline and not to remove that limit once it starts. Take a break. Stepping back from social media can help you self-reflect and allows for a good mental break. Everyone's life may seem perfect through social media. However, it is rarely the case and that, that is that perfect in reality. It has been proven that our generation is more careful than others. So let's keep it that way. This is no longer an approaching problem. It can be seen in our everyday lives. So take note on this issue and let's solve this problem for our future generations. Thank you.